This is lesson number 33 in the Paint with Lens series of short lessons. In this exercise I'd like to paint using just black and white. I don't usually use black on my paintings because I prefer to use a mixture of colours that make a black. But this time we'll work on tones. We'll work on tones of black and white. On my palette I have plenty of white but I don't have any black paint so I'm just going to use a black tint. And this is some black I used to use to blacken the artboard behind me. So with that, I can change this white in different tones of black. So that's, oh that's a grey black, that looks rather nice grey too. Okay, so let's pick up plenty of white, this is rather an old brush. And we'll get the area where we want white, we'll make it nice and light, and then white there. And then we'll introduce the black into the white up in these corners. I'll need a lot more of that. I don't want to dip it in there because it's all going to go white. So let's tip a bit out here and see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. It dries very quick, whatever it is. I think it's a bit of printing ink and some black paint that I found somewhere. Yep, so dark in the corners, very dark, and light in the middle of the painting. That's the main part. I won't put my hands in there because whatever I got there might be toxic. Let's have a few clouds like that, a little bit dark underneath that cloud, and a little bit of dark there, that'll give us a sky coming down in that direction, that looks okay, and some white clouds here, but they're smaller because they're further away, and smaller clouds, just like that, and cut the top off that one, make it look like it's behind the other one, yeah, and some clouds there I'd say, okay, a little bit of light, a bit of dark, put the dark on there that's an interesting sky I would like it very white at the bottom so we'll put plenty of white in there and come down a little bit more and I'm going to have water in it so while I'm working with a clean paint before it gets all dirty I'll put the white in for the water and a bit more down here and the water goes dark a bit of dark in there mix the dark with it I think I want it darker than that. There's some paint around there. There, so that's light and dark. And this will be the water area. I don't want it joined with a line, so I'll blend that out. Okay, so that's a start. Now, with some dark of a brush, there's some trees happening. Now, the trees in the background are pale, so they're not very dark. And that one's dark. Too dark. Okay. Mm. Okay, that'll be some background trees there. And as they come towards you, they come darker. That's not enough paint. I need a bit more paint. Tip it out. Don't go too far. And a bit darker there because it's going to be closer. That one will be closer. That one closer. Okay, that's our trees for there. And over here, we will have some trees over here, there, and across to the edge. Let's this tree go up there, say, and come in here. That'll do. Now, them ones need to be pale. So because my brush has not got any more paint on, I should get a few pale ones there. That's it. And down into the water for a reflection. And pull them down. Like that. Okay, now with a bit of white on my brush, I'll give some of these a little bit of a highlight. Just a little bit of colour on them, a little bit of white, just on the tip of the brush. And just to be quick, I'll scratch in a few branches. And across the other side, the same thing. My brush has just about run out. And more Ooh, here and there, and mm, some nice highlights there on the top of the trees. And of course, face me and say the sun's on this side of them, and not too many of them. And I'll unload the brush there because I know the white line's going to come off because there was plenty of white paint on the brush. And let's have, oh, I'll draw them in later. I'm scratching at the moment. 
Now along the background there, I like load the knife with a bit of dark first and see how that looks. Let's find our background. That's it there. And just in front of it, there's another one about there and there. That's our ground levels. So I'll wipe the knife clean, pick up some white, and put the white underneath that one. And I'll blend that together a bit because it's a little bit too black. A bit too dark there. That's better. And a little bit more white. And I can have quite a bright white line there. You can have bright things shining from the distance. No darkies. No dark. And while the knife's running okay, it went dark that line. I prefer it to be white. So let's pick up some more white and put the white on there. Let's start for our water. Okay, now these banks. Let's draw them in. Bank down there. This is a bit of white. A bit of white and dark. Bank there. It comes into the water there. And I think I'd better finish it off down there somewhere. So I'll use a bigger brush. Scrubs in some colour there. Mm, that's running well because that brush was wet, see? It's running well. Oh, it's almost like painting watercolour in acrylics, a little bit of everything. And some white over the top. Gives you there. And while it's all still wet, the fan brush will be handy here and get a bit of shape into it. Leave the light parts. See those light bits? Try and leave those. And I do need a bit of dark under there. I better put it there right now. A little bit of dark to define that bank there. Put down into the water. We'll have to define that a little bit more later with a painting knife there. Okay. And then from the bottom, I'll pick up quite a bit of dark and run along there. And that should give me some nice dark grass coming up over, which gives you a three-dimensional look if you can get that dark grass coming up over everything. So the brush goes on and off, on and off. Scoop it off. And a bit there looks good because it'll throw the water back there. Well, that's a bit too much, but now I better put some white on there. It's very runny this, but it's fun. Okay. We got away with it. That'll do. Yeah. I better use the bigger brush and I'll put take the water up there. That looks better. And bring it down so we've got some reflections. Like that. Clean the knife. And pick up some dark. Well, maybe a bit, bit of dark and a light. See what we've got there. And give us a bank there. And touch that bank up too while I'm at it. Oh, that's about perfect. See? We're good. And some white. Put a few white lines under there. Okay. So that looks like our water. And then go back with a fan brush and touch over a little bit. There's a little bit of paint on my fan brush then. So you put the brush on and see what happens. If it's okay, leave it. If not, clean your brush or do whatever you need to do. But if something looks good by accident, just leave it there. There. And down the bottom corner here, I think we need some paint. That's a bit white. Oh no, it's coming all right. I think I prefer a bit of dark in there. So let's run some dark on the masking tape and bring it up into there. And in fact, if we had a very dark one right there, I think it'll look a lot better. There. Whoops, getting a bit messy. That'll do. There's a little bit missing there. Okay. Now with a thin brush, I'll load it with white, a little tiny brush, and see if we can draw a little line to that. I think it'll draw thin lines, it's a bit of a messy brush, we'll see what happens. And we can paint just a few thin lines in here, so they definitely look like trees. There, yeah, cut it in the background, not much, just, just now and then in the background, not often. There, and a few across here. and they'll look like a forest there. Now I'll load it with black. I didn't clean it then, maybe I should clean it. 
load it with black there and we can paint in these this should go real well thin paint oh look at that doesn't that go good it's a pity it's not a good brush I might find a better brush hmm see how this one goes and always make sure your trees sink into the ground this one we can give it a shadow it's going so well there's a shadow on the tree I don't usually do shadows and load it with a little bit of white and I'm going to run a white line up the side of that I think yep now I'm twisting the brush to get the white to come off I'm, I'm turning the brush there load the brush again I don't want to go too fancy let's have another one here laying on the ground Ooh, heading up there so we better let it go up there I don't want to stop there it becomes confusing so when the brush runs down to a, a thin line which it hasn't yet there it goes I'll take it up here there and there's a bit confusing I'll reload it with dark paint make sure this dark is, is very dark this would probably be the darkest piece on your painting and if you put white on it it'll be the whitest piece also so we'll put some white on there too and there now my dark's not dark enough clean the brush you got plenty of dark and I'll darken that bit there it's so easy with this wet paint I don't know I might do this more often and it's running oh dear move that out Okay, that come down to his laying on the ground. Good enough. Now, it seems a bit unbalanced, doesn't it? It needs something over this side. Maybe we can, we don't want to put it over there, so let's put it out of here somewhere. Coming up here, across, and something like that. Plenty of dark paint, very dark paint. Up, up, very thin, running. Oh, look at that little line, that's good. Hmm don't see many of them that's terrific mm, very fine line so I've learned something today you can paint with ink and make very fine lines there and we'll bring this one out here I need to give it a bit of shape there that's run down there you see the bottom here it, it's faded the dark has disappeared because the paint is mixed together while it's been drying so I'm going along the bottom again with another lot of dark let's do that and bring it up over that twig there and possibly up over this one to make it look like it's laying there and down that corner I want it very dark because I, don't, I want people to look away from the corners I want them to look at the corner and then look over here there. we'll see how that goes See what it looks like when it's dry. The only thing I think I'm missing is my birds. So I load the light and dark on the brush and see if we can get some birds in there. Let's have one here. Mm, an M bird. Oh, he went big. He's a crow. And a V. A v there. He's a big crow too. Okay. Better stop doing that. And I'll touch up that bit there. Now, what I've got here, and I don't particularly like it, I've got a lot of very dark in the tree, but there's no dark on the ground. You, you can't have things out of contrast. You can't have all of a sudden a dark there stand out off the ground. So I'm putting a few darks on the ground here to compensate for the very dark tree. And I hope the tree does stay dark. So let's take the last few tape off that and see if we've got a nice little picture. It's still wet. I hope it dries and you can see the inks run under the masking tape in there so there we are that's a little bit different it's white acrylic paint and um, I don't know what the other was it was a bit of ink that came out of the back of my printer and a mixture that I had for blackening this board so um, it was acrylic obviously and it came together alright I think it'll dry alright but try that, try it with some black and white paint. If you like to draw in black and white, 
well this is a great way of getting into painting in black and white and then maybe you can start using colours. But it's a good example of tones. It's the one colour and the very pale tones and the very dark tones give you that three dimensional look. Throws everything back and forward. But you still must do that when you're painting in colour. You can't have dark green in the background. You must have a paler tone of the green. We'll go into that much more on other videos. Thank you. Bye.